Have you been reading it already? Oh wow, okay, cool. How many of you are going to get it tonight? Okay, good. All right, so my story is called The River, and uh, the context you need is just that it's about Detroit. I've lived in Detroit and have for the past six years, um, and talk more about it after I read it. Something in the river haunted the island between the city and the border. She felt it when she was on the waves in the little boat. She didn't say anything, because what could be said, and to whom? But she felt it, and she felt it growing. It made a sort of sense to her that something would grow there, and that things went in for something to have created itself down there. She was a water woman, and learned to boat as she learned to walk, and felt rooted in the river. She learned from her grandfather, who told her his life lessons on the water. He said, black people come from a big, spacious place, under a great big sky. In this little country here, we have to fight for any inches we get. But the water has always helped us get free, one way or another. On sunny days, she took paying passengers over by the Belle Isle Bridge to see the cars and the water. Mostly you couldn't see anything, but sometimes you'd catch a glimpse of something shiny, metal, not of the river. Something big and swallowed that had a color of cherry red of 1964 American Main Dream. These days, the river felt like it had back then. A little too swollen and too active, too attentive. Too many days, she sat behind the wheel of the little boat, dialing down her apprehension. She felt the restlessness in the weeds and the shadows that held Detroit together. Belle Isle, an overgrown island, housed the ruins of a zoo an aquarium, a conservatory, and the old yacht club. Down the way were the abandoned, squatted towers of the Renaissance Center, the tallest ode to economic crisis in the world. She had been born not too far from the river, in Chalmers on the east side. As a child, she played along the riverbanks. She could remember when a black person could only dock a boat at one black old harbor. She remembered it because all she ever wanted was to be on that river, especially after her grandfather passed. When she was old enough, she purchased the little boat, motor awkward on its backside, and named her Betsy after her mama. Her mama had taught her important things. How to love Detroit, that gardening in their backyard was not a hobby but a strategy, and to never trust a man for the long haul. Mostly she listened to her mama, and when she'd gone astray, she'd always been able to return to the river. Now she was 43, and the river was freedom. In that boat, she felt liberated all day. She loved to anchor near the Underground Railroad Memorial and imagine runaway slaves standing on one bank and how good, terrifying how good that water must have felt under the boat or all over the skin or frozen under the feet. This was a good river for boating. You wouldn't jump in for any money. No one would. She felt the same way about eating out of the river, but it was a hungry time. That morning she watched a fisherman reel in something, slow, like he didn't care at all. When he pulled up, a long, slender fish had an oily sheen on its scales. She tried to catch his eye with her disgust, offer a side-eye warning to the stranger, but he turned with his catch and headed for the icebox. She was aware of herself as a kind of outsider. She loved the city desperately and the people in it, but she mostly loved them from her boat. Lately, she wore her overalls, kept her gray hair short and natural, her sentences brief. Her routine didn't involve too many humans. When she tried to speak, even small talk, there was so much sadness and grief in her mouth for the city disappearing before her eyes that it got hard to breathe. Next time she was out on the water, on a stretch just east of Shane Park, she watched two babies on the rocks by the river, daring each other to get closer. Their mothers were in deep and focused gossip while also minding a grill that uttered a gorgeous smell of the river waves. The waves were moving aggressive today. And she wanted to yell to the babies or the mamas, but couldn't get the words together. You can't yell just any old thing in Detroit. You have to get it right. Folks remember. As she watched, one baby touched his bare toe in. His trembling, ashen local body stretched out into the rippling, nuclear, aquamarine green surface. Then suddenly he jumped back. He jumped up and backed away from the river, scooped in every limb. He took off running past his friend all the way to his mama's thighs which he grabbed and buried himself in, that was incoherent confessions to her flesh. The mother didn't skip a beat or a word, just rushed him aside, ignoring his warning. She didn't judge, though, that mama. 
times were beyond tough in Detroit. A moment to pause, to vent, to sit by the river and just talk. That was a rare and precious thing. Peak of the summer was scorched that year. The city could barely get dressed. The few people with jobs sat in icy offices watching the world waver outside. And people without jobs survived in a variety of ways that all felt like punishment in the heat. It seemed like every morning there'd be bodies. Those who lost our witty struggle during the sweaty night. Bodies by the only overnight shelter. Bodies in the fake downtown garden sponsored by Coca-Cola. Bodies in potholes on streets struck with Christmas lights because the broke city turned off the street lights. Late one Sunday afternoon, after three weddings took place on the island, she heard a message come over the river radio. Four pale bodies found floating in the surrounding river on the far side. She tracked the story throughout the day upon being dragged out of the water and onto the soil by beloved official hands. It was clear that the bodies of two adults and two teenagers were recently dead, hardly bloated, each one bruised as if they'd been in a massive struggle before the toxic river filled their lungs. They were from Pennsylvania. On Monday, she motored past the spot she heard the Coast Guard going on about over the radio. The water was moving about itself, swirling without reason. She shook her head, knowing truths that couldn't be spoken out loud were getting out of hand. She tried for years to keep an open heart to the new folks, most of them white. The city needed people to live in it and job creation, right? And some of these new folks seemed to really care. But it could harden her heart a little each day to see people showing up all the time with jobs or making new work for themselves and their friends, while folks born and raised here couldn't get a living, couldn't get investors for business. She heard entrepreneurs on the news speak of Detroit as this exciting, new, blank canvas. She wondered if the new folks just couldn't see all the people there, the signs everywhere that there was history, and there was a people still living all over that canvas. I'll stop there.